What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to use mod tools with the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip. So this is the little chip that allows you to host the PS4 exploit offline, completely offline. Um, I know there's the caching method but that uh, still requires you to be online to initially cache the exploit and then sometimes it fails to cache it and you have to you know, reconnect. Whereas this method is completely offline, which is why quite a few people use these little um, ESP chips. So, but some people have been asking me, how do you actually use mod tools? How do you connect mod tools with it? Because it's a completely offline kind of closed loop system. So how are you supposed to, you know, use the trainer that I showed off in my last video? How are you supposed to use tools like that when you're hosting the exploit using this Wi-Fi chip? So in this video, I'm going to show you guys how you can do that. So first thing you need to do is download the stuff that I have right here. So you're going to want the KMZ 5.05 exploit. Uh, so I downloaded the version 2.7, which is the latest version. So just download the latest version from when you're watching this video from the link in the description. Um, and then you also want the drivers. So I'm on Windows 10, so I downloaded the Windows 10 driver. If you're on Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1, you download this one. And then you're also going to want to download the uh, Node MCU Flasher. There's a 64-bit version for 64-bit uh, machines and a 32-bit version for 32-bit machines. So select whichever one you want and download that. And as you can see, I've already got that stuff all downloaded here. So the first thing you're going to want to do is install the driver and make sure you have your ESP uh, chip plugged into your computer with the little USB to mini USB cable. And then you're going to want to go ahead and run the driver. So again, x64 for 64-bit machines, x86 for 32-bit machines. And then you're going to want to go ahead and do next, finish. Let it install the driver. It might take a while for you. And then you want to go ahead and open up the Node MCU Flasher. And then you need to select your COM port. So for me, it's COM port 3. So the way you can tell what COM port, you want to go ahead and look for your device manager on your computer. And we should have ports, COM, and LPT. If you expand that, it will tell you. So Silicon Labs. Um, EP210, that's the driver we installed. So it's on COM port 3. So that's how you know which COM port. And then you want to go ahead and select the firmware, which is the uh, KMZ bin file right here. So I'm going to browse for that. So I went ahead and opened it up here. You can leave these settings on default, um, I believe. Or you can, if, if the default settings don't work, then you can go ahead and do this. So for 8266, it says use QIO and most ESP32 devices use DIO, but for me, DIO seems to work fine on my 8266, so I just leave it as default, and then say yes to wipe all data, which will wipe all the data that was previously on it off it, and then just flash this new uh, bin file. So once you've done that, all you have to do is click flash node MCU, and that's gonna start uh, erasing the data that's currently on it, and then it will start flashing the new data to the chip. Okay, so once it's finished, it'll say done. So you can go ahead and close it and unplug it from your computer. And then you can go ahead and plug it into your PS4. Again, using the USB to mini USB cable. So I'm just plugging it into my PS4 right now. There we go. Okay, so once we're on the PS4, you're gonna want to go ahead and go to your settings and then go to network and set up an internet connection, use Wi-Fi. Make sure you choose custom, do not choose easy because if you choose easy and you connect to the Wi-Fi network, it's going to basically fail when it comes to doing, doing the proxy. So when you say do not use proxy, it's gonna error out. So make sure you do custom because it will ignore that. And then you want to go ahead and do your PS4 KMZ ESP, select that or whatever yours is called if you're using a different um, bin file that you flashed on there that it might be called something something else and then enter the password the password for mine is just password you'll find it on the github page where the uh, bin file was posted 
you'll find the Wi-Fi password. So in my case, it's just password, so I click OK. And then I'm going to do automatic IP, do not specify DHCP, automatic DNS, automatic MTU, and do not use proxy server. And then that's it. Now don't test the internet connection because that's not going to work, of course, since this is, a, this is an offline uh, system. And then go view connection status and you can see your IP address. So note down your IP address. So mine is 10.1.1.100. So keep a mental note of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and either go to your user guide, which should load up your your exploit page. There we go. Or you can just open up the WebKit exploit or the, the WebKit in the PS4 and just go to any uh, website. So google.com will take you, will redirect you here as well. Basically any domain you try and go to, it will redirect you to this page. So then all you have to do is load the bin loader or payload loader and you might get an out of memory error, in which case just, you know, continue. Yeah, there you go, not enough free system memory. So just click OK and eventually, just keep keep clicking OK if you get that message multiple times. It will eventually take you to this screen, which says waiting for payload on port 9020. So at this point, we go back over to the computer and load up our mod tool that we want to use. Um, in fact, before we load the mod tool, this is the important thing because if we just try and send the payload from the mod tool while we're still connected to our normal network it's not going to work because the ps4 is connected to the esp chips network whereas our computer is connected to our normal home network our normal uh, our normal router so that's not going to work so what we have to do is go into the wi-fi settings on our computer and also connect our computer to the same Wi-Fi chip, the same um, ESP chip, which will show up here. Um, if not, just refresh uh, until it shows up and then just go ahead and click connect. And I've already set this up before, so it's probably not going to ask me for the password, but yours will ask you for the password if it's the first time connecting. So just enter the same password you entered on the PS4 and now we're connected to that same network which means we will also have an IP address. If I go to uh, CMD and I type in IP config, we will also have an IP address here on our Wi-Fi network that is similar. So 10.1.1.101, whereas the one on the PS4 is 10.1.1.100. So we're on the same network and that means we can send a payload to our PS4 now. So I'm gonna open up the mod tool Click OK, and I'm then just going to enter the IP address of the PS4, which is 10.1.1.100. Make sure I select 5.05. Okay, so just to show this here, what I'm going to do is I've got the IP address entered. I've got the right firmware version entered. So all I'm going to do now is click Send Payload. And there, there you go. It pops up. PS4 Trainer by Tyler Mods. I'll oh, go away, Discord. What the hell? All right, so... It loads up here. We're getting all the notifications showing up. So I'll just go back over to the PS4 properly now. Okay, and then at this point I can press the middle button, just launch one of my games just to show that it works. We'll load up God of War. So as you can see up here, I've got 5000 XP. So let's just, first of all, attach, which is gonna attach to the process. There we go, PS4 Trainer, and we'll set XP to 10,000. Set XP, doesn't change immediately, but if I unpause and repause, it's now 10,000. So as you can see, it is working. Yeah, so that's really the only problem. You have to be connected on the same network. So maybe that's the reason why people were confused as to how to use mod tools with this Wi-Fi chip, but you absolutely can. You just need to make sure the computer and the PS4 are both connected to the same chip, um, the same Wi-Fi network, and then that way they'll, you know, they'll be on the same network, so they'll be able to connect to each other and send the payload and all of that stuff. So it works. Uh, it works pretty well. It is, you know, using Wi-Fi, so some things might be a bit iffy. Like I'm not sure. 
stuff like unlimited health, unlimited arrows, uh, and unlimited rage. I mean, that seems to be working fine right now. Let's see, Atreus arrows. Yeah, it, it works fine, but that's of course because my PS4 and my computer are right next to each other. They both have a full uh, signal strength, Both they're both on four bars, but obviously you know, if your computer's further away, you might have a weak signal that might cause some issues with the mod tools uh, when trying to send mods or when you're trying to do stuff that happens in a loop where things are being set in memory over and over again every second or half a second can cause issues. But so long as you have a decent signal strength, you shouldn't run into too many issues. So, yeah, that's how you use the ESP8266 with mod tools. Hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.